All right, so in fact, it is one of the greatest. I think we say this all the time because there's so many series and a lot of them are really great, but this has been a consistently good uh, hockey playoffs. It's sort of tapering off a little bit now. So the Rangers have had clearly a hard time scoring on Marc-Andre Fleury, that the long streak of, uh, of shutout periods by, by Fleury was broken yesterday by Carl Hagelin. Then the Penguins uh, made it 1-1, then 2-1. The Penguins went up 3-1. And then the Rangers uh, answered back. Uh, Mazzuccarello scored. Uh, Strawman on the assist there. there you're, you're, the names you're not hearing, Rick Nash, Martin St. Louis, uh, you're not hearing about the big scores on the Rangers. Richards you're not hearing about because the, the Penguins are figuring out how to shut them down at the blue line. And then Flurry, who everybody thought would be sort of the, the linchpin in, in the Rangers actually possibly winning this series, Flurry ha has been phenomenal. So, and, and so too is Lundqvist. He's played really well. But what we're seeing now is Malkin and Crosby being rejoined by Penguins coach Dan Bilesma for the first time in a long time. It happened, I would say, in probably game three or game four of the Columbus series. It's really worked magic. The problems they have, of course, are both of them like to work from behind the net. Working from behind the net, you, you, you only need one guy back there. But they seem to be judiciously switching off who it is that's going to be back there. And Malkin's goal last night coming on a backhand from the left side of the crease was just a spectacular backhand that Lundqvist didn't even see. Uh, I, it doesn't seem that the Rangers have any mojo. It, it didn't really seem like they had a ton of it in beating Philadelphia. They were just the better team. This time they're showing why they're not the better team, that Martin St. Louis has not been able to produce in this series, and the Penguins' defense a lot better than a lot of people thought. Chris Letang also playing really well up there with, uh, with Crosby and Malkin. So I, I don't see, even being a Ranger fan, I don't see a tremendous reason for hope or a comeback here. Maybe they can pick game five off in Pittsburgh, come back, but even Madison Square Garden hasn't been kind to the Rangers, certainly in this series. And, and, and that was disappointing too, that they didn't get any lift out of being at home. Uh, they didn't play like they had any lift. It doesn't mean you just win because you're at home. They didn't even seem inspired. Uh, and I don't know if that falls on Alain Vigneault. I don't know who that falls on, but the team's just not playing well. They don't have the firepower. And Rick Nash, uh, you know, at the end of this series, we're gonna talk about Rick Nash a lot because was he worth all of that? Why can he produce uh, like a la Joe Thornton produce in the regular season? Then we get to the playoffs and, and he's a little bit of an empty suit, an empty sweater, as it were. Moving on to a couple of other series, the Montreal-Boston series, that is a, a, a real up series. Montreal up two to one, uh, playing game uh, four tonight at the Bell Center in Montreal, and, and it's going to be fantastic to see uh, that crowd there. The Habs are up two to one. The P.K. Subban uh, story that we talked about from game one still lingers, but this is just a great old hockey tournament that the, the two of them are playing. And I tell you, uh, this is an old hockey rivalry right now, and you're seeing it played out. You're seeing hard hits that you don't see ordinarily in the playoffs. You're seeing scraps. You're seeing close games. Montreal won the last one 4-2. to two. It'll be interesting to see how the Bruins respond to being down. They haven't had to do it a lot. It was surprising when they lost game one uh, against Detroit uh, in the last series, but they responded beautifully to that. They did uh, respond nicely to being down in game two in this series, but coming back out uh, of losing a game, being down two to one with the chance of going home down three to one, be interesting to see how that team responds to what, what, what happened uh, the other night in Montreal. Moving to, of course, to the Kings series. The Kings, I, I don't know how to explain them. I mean, everything is going right for them, and Jonathan Quick is doing what he did in 2012. Now, he's playing out of his head. He's, uh, he can be, I think, the best goalie in hockey at, at times. And when he is, I don't know what you can do. I mean, the, the Ducks have not been able to penetrate at all. Corey Perry, largely absent in this series, but so is the entire team. Uh, but you always look at the scores when you're getting shut out and you're losing, um, and you lose two games, two straight games at home. And of course, it's, you know, it's kind of a home and home here with, with LA and, and Anaheim, but there is an advantage to being on your ice. Uh, and, and now you're just starting to see the Kings g seem to gain momentum with every game. If the Ducks do not win tonight, I mean, it's easy to say they'll be down 3 nothing. When has that happened? Well, it hasn't happened since last week that a team came back from being down three games to love. But it's not going to happen in this series. The Ducks need a win tonight. It'll be interesting to see uh, what happens there. Uh, the Wild and, and Blackhawks, uh, uh, old Rick Strom's favorite team, the Blackhawks, they've looked good. They, have they looked amazing? No, I, I don't think they've looked amazing. And they lost game three to the, to the Wild. Uh, a huge win for the Wild. And, and that series... 
you know, I don't think that's a team you can count out. The Avalanche made the mistake of counting them out a little bit, I think. I don't think they took them as seriously as they needed to. And the Blackhawks, I think, are going to be admonished to start taking. I think that Quenville's going to start getting them to take this wild team a little more seriously. They're very, very good. And, and I, I, I think that that's going to be a, an issue tonight. So these series... Well, not as good as the last series, and certainly tonight could change all of that and make them just brutal. Uh, the, the one series that should have every hockey eye on it is Montreal and Boston. I recommend you watch that game tonight.